the 10th of June, 2022. Thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel. In addition to that, make sure that you go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. So this particular tattoo right here, it might be considered whatever viewpoint. I don't know. Nobody's ever told me their opinion of my tattoos. I also haven't ever asked anybody else's opinion of my tattoos. So I got this tattoo in the year 2012. Now, 2012 in San Antonio, Texas, where I was going to take my scuba dive gear in reference to after my scuba diving, earning 26 scuba diving certifications, Yes, there were civilian recreational scuba diver instructors, though unlike what they did, I didn't take my work in that recreational civilian sort of way. And so while I was involved earning my 26 scuba diving certifications, because of the way the civilian recreational scuba diving sector was, I just didn't trust them to not be recreational, to not be lazy because of their own descriptions of themselves. And so because I paid attention to the detail, both in reference to male and female civilian recreational scuba divers in the state of Texas, well, in the time frame as to just before going to do my scuba dive in reference to the Vandenberg, I was informed that there's a difference between Texas scuba divers, which thankfully I suppose I should say in that regard as to the year 2020. Well, thankfully that wasn't um, put into that regard. So in that time frame of my scuba diving, well, I put certain things into place to make sure that just in case I ever wound up above the Mason-Dixon line and not in the state of New Jersey first, that I would have the capacity to make sure I knew. Now, each and every one of my tattoos has a multiple amount of meaning. Each and every tattoo has a multitude of factors associated, whether it has to do with before my head injury and or after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. Now, in my three volume book series, if you go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. And if you were to go to the book section, you can click on the link for my books that I authored, that three volume book series as to the adventures of Susan Meeling's scuba diver extraordinaire. I described what I dealt with in a small amount in reference to the civilian recreational scuba divers on land. Anybody who knows about how 2019 had been in regards of, well, you can go to my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com. And in the journal blogs regarding scuba diving, there are these sections to take in consideration as to what I dealt with in 2019 that was absolutely nothing different as to what I dealt with in 2009. Because if it was actually different than what I dealt with in 2009 in a smaller amount of people compared to the larger amount at the time, well, everything in 2020 and 2021 would have been different. 
So there is the capacity of that particular, and that is of the bottom of the oceanic waters in a combined factor of pictures that I took when I went scuba diving, specifically in the Gulf of Mexico area, the Boca Raton area, not so much in reference to the Vandenberg area at all whatsoever. No, 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 that would be that. This would be a pretty version as to what I handled at the Vandenberg. That'd be the prettiest version you'd be allowed. So while some people may have their little, you know, recreational viewpoint, again, this was completed in the year 2012 before I authored my three volume book series in reference to the adventures of Susan Mewling scuba diver extraordinaire that was published in 2020. This was completed in 2012. For those who are capable to do arithmetic, what would the year difference be from 2012 to 2020? So, you know, I have, you know, this particular aspect and that's Methuselah, my first pet after waking up from my coma, after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, after I had been taken off of Fort Sam Houston in reference to that particular situation. And yet at the same time, you might see a resemblance to a smaller condensed version of an albino moray eel that I had taken a picture of. I had also, I don't know if it's a mistake to have protected those people I went scuba diving with in regards of the Gulf of Mexico, because obviously since my work has yet to be correctly recognized, in the capacities of correct recognition to my work because of what that actually would be. And since I haven't been asked in any capacity of in person, face to face in person and or through my two contact form through my website, www.susanmeeling.com, since that has not occurred at all, well, there are the facts that all of my tattoos that were originally completed were completed before the year of 2012, for the most part, except for one tattoo that was completed-ish in the year of 2013, 2014, and then two that were updated in the year of 2021. Other than that, all of my tattoos were completed within the time frame of 2006 through 2012. Yes, there's that one in 2013-ish. And so in those particular references, since I threw my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com. Since I updated that after my scuba diving and after my original tattoos, well, obviously those types of recreational, lazy civilian scuba divers would only be allowed to know whatever I had authored in reference to just one facet to the tattoos descriptions. There are a multitude of factors per tattoo as to that. With my journal blog, The Ornery PSA Updates, 
I have brought up quite a few factors in reference to my childhood and my teenage years before my head injury, which some of that I had written about in reference to finding a silver lining. That was published first in 2014. You know, 2014 would be how many years before 2012 or after 2012. For those of you who can do the arithmetic. Now, yes, I did the Dropbox link at the time of 2015 afterwards, which again, in the year of 2009, because of the civilian recreational lazy scuba divers that I had known at the time frame of, I did make preventative measures for myself. So that way I wouldn't have to deal with certain things because I've had this thing called vision and sight. And since being capable to have this vision and sight since well before, well, I made the attempts. So upon the opening of my scuba dive gear, well, I authored what that sensation was as to a vision because of seeing. So my sight had been in reference to this blue bag but I didn't understand why the sensation physically hurt me. And then there was the year 2012 regarding U-Haul because of the work that I had done to protect my gear because of what I was doing and wanted to make sure that the armed forces of the United States of America to that particular gear would have gotten. Unfortunately, though, in the year 2012, that situation occurred. And upon the hypothetical time frame, well, that vision went the way it did. I suppose maybe there is a twist of irony that it would be called spice as to that factor in comparison. So that pain that had occurred was as it was, though I suppose maybe certain other factors of my work would make sense. Now again, in a multitude of far more than just what I wrote about regarding finding a silver lining and finding the silver lining, I suppose I found a silver lining here and there and found the silver lining here and there. Although what would be considered as a silver lining, I suppose I could make the joke as to the silver needle regarding a tattoo uh, equipment in comparison. And so while I have brought this up more recently, only because, well, anybody who has the understanding from the knowledge of a Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment invitation that I had. Well, that in its own right as to the work that I had been working on before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. My grandpa gathered as far as his, however you want to put it, the individuals as to the black suits with the white button down shirts and the black ties, the fedoras, the specific pins in reference to their ties, as well as the types of handkerchiefs and the specific shoes in those references. As to those meetings, usually no more than three weeks, ironically, from a larger capacity of a situation that I handled. You know, in comparison to my work in scuba diving. Except I can't really say that because in Clear Springs, not in the year 2019, in the year 2009, 
around three weeks, ironically, from the time frame of returning from Florida. I had a weekend out in that area and there were two males that had shown up and, I, and I've authored about this. I've spoken about this well before I wrote about it. These two males, they showed up and when they showed up, they were in black suits with white shirts and a black tie. And I remember I was in the area that International had normally been in and I was speaking with a few guys and I looked off to the side and one of the males that I was speaking with asked me what I was looking at and I said, do you see that older car over there? That's beautiful. And that guy looked over and he said, what year is it? And I said, I don't know, but I have a feeling they're coming to speak with me. And that individual, if he were to remember that discussion, he was someone that I knew in International. He had continued discussing with me and when I saw the two males walk out from the bathroom area, well, they weren't in those black suits anymore. They were in this Hawaiian shirt. Each one of them had their own Hawaiian shirt. It was a button down shirt and these khaki types of pants. And they didn't have flip flops. They didn't have water shoes. They had these strappy type of sandals. And then they walked over from where their car was, slowly, while I was talking to the guy. So this one male that I was speaking with in one of my classes beforehand had looked over and said, oh wow, who are those guys? And they had those um, kind of floppy um, khaki colored hats with them. To, I guess, whatever. They walked over and they said, hi, are you Susan? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm Susan. They said, could we speak with you? Of course, sure. And so I, you know, excused myself from the group that I was speaking with at that time. I believe it was the beginning or the second weekend in September. Excuse me, you guys, I gotta actually speak with some guys. If there's anybody from not just International, but anybody in reference to Clear Springs at that time in 2009. And so these two males had brought up Hawaii and the Arizona. I have brought this up in multitudes of discussions in person, face to face, in person with people. I've also brought this up in reference to my books, Finding a Silver Lining, possibly Finding the Silver Lining, and then my three volume book series, The Adventures of Susan Meeling, Scuba Diver Extraordinaire. You can go to my website in the book section of www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. You can also go to my journal blog area on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. The journal blog, the ornery PSA. There's possibly something about these two particular males. Now here is where it gets interesting if it wasn't already interesting enough. You know, when I got this tattoo completed, Less than three weeks later, there was this situation in Austin where I had met with a male at a lunch munch brunch that I was holding at the time. And he had a black suit with a white button down shirt and a black tie. He had kind of similar shoes ish to the guys I knew before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. He did have a fedora. He did have gauze around him though. It is so irony, <laughs> about three weeks from that time. And so while some in that recreational, lazy, civilian, recreational, yet again, uh, scuba diving style might have wanted to wish it'd be a funny little gag. 
Might have wanted to wish it'd be a funny little prank. Might have wanted to wish that I wouldn't take scuba diving so seriously because that was a big complaint during the time frame of 2009. In 2009, the various civilian recreational scuba divers, well, the females complained mainly because of how I physically look and also complained because I didn't allow joking around. I didn't want to see certain things in those capacities. And so when I'd speak, now well, they were as they were. And so it was as it was. The males in reference to the civilian recreational scuba diving sector, some of them started becoming more serious about scuba diving in comparison to how they started. Possibly not serious enough though. And so that was the year of 2009. This is the year of 2022. And in 2019, if they were actually taking scuba diving seriously from the time frame of 2009 through 2019, upon my return to Clear Springs Scuba Park, everything would have been different. Not the physical areas of Clear Springs Scuba Park, not in reference to the lower number of people. No, that's not what I'm talking about regarding the different. Upon my return, there should have been discussions with me. Since that did not occur, there were some, there was one individual who had informed me that he went with a group of guys out to the Vandenberg and they took rebreathers. Now this is before, remember 2019 is before 2020, before I had started putting everything together in reference to the adventures of Susan B. Link, Scuba Diver Extraordinaire, that three volume book series. <clears throat> he had informed me he and a group of guys got rebreathers and dropped down and didn't get anywhere close to the tower. I said, yep, mm-hmm, that's not a surprise at all. Now, in other prior discussions, as well as my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, as well as that three-volume book series, I had an not an argument, it was a little bit of a debate with one of my civilian recreational scuba dive instructors who had tried to tell me that when he was going to the Oriskany the same year that I went to the Vandenberg, that he had read it was 115 feet to the top of the tower for the Oriskany, which I laughed in his face because I could not help myself. And I, and because he had heard at a prior scuba dive that I was going to be landing at the bottom of the ocean when I went to the Vandenberg. And so he tried to say, well, you know, at the Oriskany, yeah, well, that's the Oriskany, that's not the Vandenberg. The Vandenberg is a different boat, <laughs> duh. And so he tried to tell me what I already knew, other than the Oriskany is not the Vandenberg, that the Oriskany was sunk off of the coastline from South Carolina. Okay, yeah, well, and the Vandenberg's not sunk off of the coastline of South Carolina. It's out in the Florida Keys, you know, where a bunch of land has been washed away from the state of Florida and the gully area of that location, you know, <laughs> it's not a coastline when there are islands. I mean, there's kind of a coastline, but I know what you're referring to. It's the continental shelf that you're referring to as to the Oriskany. I'm not going to the Oriskany. I'm going to the Vandenberg. <laughs> What's wrong with you? 
And so he tried, among a few others, to explain to me that it was 115 feet from what they thought, although they discussed it as though they actually knew in comparison. And so, I mean, again, I was born and raised in New Jersey. And so in New Jersey, when going to New York City or New York State, there's a few areas, same thing when going to Pennsylvania, there's a few areas where you see naval vessels constantly on certain roads because there's this thing called the Atlantic area of the ocean along the New Jersey area, same thing with New York. And so while having this discussion with these people in the civilian recreational scuba diver area, they tried to explain to me that they had read some information, which was funny because, well, they may have read whatever information I had the memories of my childhood. Sure, I didn't know what the names of whatever boats were. <laughs> I was a child and a teenager and, you know, trying to see the name of a boat when, you know, whatever the speed limit is and however many vehicles and being on a bridge in comparison to where the name of the boat usually is on a boat in the water. Well, you know, kind of a little difficult. <laughs> So I made attempts to explain to these people in the civilian recreational scuba diver area that I knew that it was deeper at the Vandenberg because one of these civilian recreational scuba dive instructors tried to inform me that he knew that from what he read, he read, not saw with his eyes, read, <laughs> that the boat was however many hundred feet tall. Well, that was, that was, that was cute. And so I did as best as I could to <laughs> remain calm because it was kind of really sad how much these civilian recreational scuba divers were willing to discredit all of their own work. For every scuba diver they had ever certified, except if they were to ever have a scuba diver that didn't do it in a civilian recreational sort of way. And so, and this is back in the year 2009. Again, this is the year 2022. And so, if they've remained civilian recreational lazy scuba dive instructors. Well then, obviously, from the time frame of 2009 through the time frame of 2022, well, that's, that's their record that they're willing to discredit. Because again, this is from 2012. So while some people might wish, really just, well, I probably wouldn't have have had that tattoo completed if um, there wasn't certain situations at the Vandenberg. I mean, there are a few other situations such as out from Cozumel and this particular, I call him googly eye. And so I didn't have a name for him. He looked like an octopus, but <laughs> I don't know, he had a pointy head and he was a cute little baby. And again, I like Great Danes and Mastiffs and Rottweilers in comparison to teacup chihuahuas. So you'll have to take that in consideration. And so I, you know, had seen googly eye when I landed at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico the first time of scuba diving in reference to the what is considered a shoreline scuba dive. And so those stairs and then drop in the water and all that stuff, so you know. Googly eye, it's so cute. He tried 
he tried, he tried, so he did, he tried to camo. So what he did while he was following along, he tried to camo, but he was so cute. He tried to camo behind these coral reef structures that were fairly tall and it was, aw, no, you can't camo. So, you know, that would be like, well, can you see me against this, this white door? And if you can, in regards of my lecture, sermon, monologue, well, this is about how much he camoed in reference to at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. And, you know, it was, he, he really tried. He really did. He tried so hard. He changed some of his colors because of the way that particular species, I suppose, does it. And he tried to do what a lot of octopi do, you know, curling in a certain way and, you know, wrapping his little tentacles, again, perspective, you know, wrapping his little tentacles around the <laughs> coral reef as though I couldn't see him. Again, if you can see me standing here, <laughs> that is about how little he came out. And so a uh, choice of color for this particular official YouTube video of mine, make sure to subscribe and share the link to my official YouTube videos. And if you're going to leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. So, you know, it's, again, it's multifaceted. So in that particular reference, depending on, you know, the area, the situation and stuff like that. So it was by the time having this discussion with these civilian recreational scuba dive instructors as though they had any knowledge as to my childhood, despite making attempts, which of course, if they spoke with my biological mother, she wouldn't be capable to tell them anything. She's afraid to have her feet in the oceanic waters above her ankles. You know, they couldn't speak with my biological father about my childhood regarding the oceanic waters because, well, first and foremost, he doesn't really like going in the ocean above his waistline. And even still, most importantly of all, they weren't there. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of ignorant to ever ask my, about my childhood regarding the oceanic waters to anybody other than myself. Then you have my biological little sister, which is four years younger than me. And her first formative memories are in the year of 1990 or 1991. And I was going to the oceanic waters in 1984, which is before her birth. And so there's that. And then even after she was born, she was an infant and then a toddler. And so there's that. And then she doesn't even like getting in the oceanic water area above her knees. In comparison, so there are these official videos of mine where, such as December in 2020, I went out to Kitty Hawk and went into the oceanic waters a few times off the Atlantic. I did also go to the Gulf of Mexico, do a few official YouTube videos of mine, though that's warm water compared to, you know, December especially. Uh, however, I did, and you know, you could see where I had went to in comparison. And so I just went and walked in the area of the Gulf of Mexico to the other side of the uh, bow area of the Lexington um, to, you know, for those who would understand that area. So I just walked out there. You could see it in my official YouTube video of mine, though you wouldn't be capable to see me walking, and yet you would, because in order for me to be swimming, I'd have to be swimming in some capacity, even if it was doggy paddle or swimming of some type regarding that area. You know, common sense and intelligence would dictate that, of course. And so I just, you know, I was out there, just did the little video this way as I walked, because again, if I had to swim, I would do what most people do as far as some form of swimming to keep afloat in comparison to walking. 
And so on the other side of the bow to the Lexington in the Gulf of Mexico off of the Texas Gulf Coast area, it is as it is. So, you know, but those civilian recreational scuba divers in regards of the year 2009 and 2019, though 2009 for this reference, they tried to explain to me that they knew about the Ariskany, which had nothing to do with my childhood and any of that work. Had nothing to do with when I was a teenager and any of that work. Had nothing to do with the year when I was considered or am a biological adult, so it had nothing to do with 2003, it had nothing to do with 2004, had nothing to do with 2011, obviously nothing to do with 2009, and since 2011 hadn't happened before 2009, obviously, they were telling me about the Ariskany, which meant nothing to me, because why would I care about the Ariskany being sunk off of the area of South Carolina compared to. And so, you know, there's my original Facebook account as to what started out as Susan Mean Ling and Dark Lily is the, you know, I figured I could make a joke in reference to because, you know, this is where, you know, there's this Lily right here and there's this picture I took after having to pull something out of my leg regarding, you know, I know there's the joke, you know, pull my leg or something. No, no, it wasn't a joke, um, but however, you know. And so there's that as far as the pictures regarding the original posting of my pictures on Facebook. There's also Fat Life, and I did get thankfully access to my original Fat Life account, and since they had brought up looking for a certain picture from before, that wasn't on my FetLife profile at that time. Um, <laughs> there is that factor in regards of that merger situation. And so, you know, there's, there's just that, this, again, this is 2012, this tattoo right here, 2012, which would be the same year. Still pulling that out of my leg, you know, which would be the year after Irving of 2011. So in regards of the civilian recreational scuba divers in reference to what they tried to tell me about the Ariskany and what they read, which was cute because they had read about how the Ariskany was 115 feet to the, to the top of the tower. And you know, I mean, anybody who knows anything it wouldn't be 115 feet. If it was feet, it's probably read in a Hebrew way as to how many actual feet, if it's in feet, if it's in meters, or if it's in miles, or fathoms, or atmospheric measure, whatever, you know. It's, the, it's, you know, there are those who, well, it's the number, you know. <laughs> It's a number and it could be. Um, and so they tried to tell me their opinions. And while they tried to tell me their opinions as civilian recreational scuba divers, as they described themselves as civilian, well, they didn't say civilian. They said they were recreational scuba divers, which I was explaining to them, I'm not a civilian recreational scuba diver. I'm not doing any of my scuba diving in any capacity of a recreational way. There is nothing that is recreational about my scuba diving. There is nothing that is civilian about my scuba diving, including how I began getting into scuba diving. Sure, the only way I could get the certifications was through the civilian sector, okay. However, I wasn't doing it in that capacity. I explained in reference to the Jewish Medical Journal and the UK Medical Journal and the British Medical Journal, discussing in regards of the articles that I had read 
about how scuba diving was supposed to assist people who had headaches because of the equalized pressure upon descending into the, the waters. Well, I remembered my childhood. <laughs> and so it was kind of similar to my tattoos. It was more than one bird per stone. Mm -hmm. And so in that particular reference, I can take care of that. There's a bunch of guys who, you know, since 2001, obviously guys beforehand, but since 2001. And these guys since 2001, having had TBIs as they're called now, though individuals who before 2001 that are in veteran status, they know about vocational rehabilitation. And so they can have where they earn their scuba dive instructor license if they haven't had certain capacities. And so they can work in that, if they're interested in that, especially in regards of the difference, especially to the seriousness in comparison to the lazy or the recreational type of scuba diving. And because in my opinion, you know, um, even though military guys, they can be jovial and joke around. When it comes to scuba diving, they're not going to be joking around in reference to the work to actually earn. And there's a standard and so on and so forth. And so between the aspects as to surviving a TBI and in reference to you know, there are plenty of veterans who maybe they do have a, a scuba diving background. Maybe they can't really talk about it, I don't know. Uh, however, there could be those who don't. And it is as it is, but they have the vocational rehabilitation or whatever GI Bill equivalent and they can earn if they're interested because obviously, though the millennial time frame of Obviously, it would be understood that certain things wouldn't be tolerated in that civilian recreational type of scuba diving way. And my opinion, though, depends on the viewpoint as to those particular factors. And so, and maybe, maybe there's a guy or two or a few and not being sexist, male or female where that, yes, the paperwork might take a little bit of time. However, if they are serious about having something in regards of their time and it's seen as something that would be valuable to them, they could obviously do that. I have seen in reference to the news articles recently where there's a lifeguard shortage and so in regards to the instructor capacity, well, maybe in that reference as well as to, you know, responsible scuba diving in comparison to civilian recreational scuba diving in the lazy capacity. My opinion, I'm sorry if that's concerned. And so, you know, in the year 2009, these individuals tried to tell me that they read something. And those guys who are considered veterans would obviously understand dealing with certain capacities in that reference where these civilians and or, and, and, and then there's, you know, Pogue type of, you know, I, I was supposed to do automated logistical specialists, so by technicalities, you know, <laughs> that technically, I didn't graduate basic training though. So nonetheless, in that particular reference, they know about those types within the ranks, <laughs> though, of course, in the civilian sector, as to how they read a book or they... They saw something online and they thought whatever they thought as far as that is concerned. <laughs> so similarly to these individuals in reference to <laughs> how they, they saw something that they read about how it's 115 feet to the top of the tower to the Oriskany in 2009 
Um, sure, there's 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 the climate change and the rise in the oceanic levels. Sure, there is that. Uh huh. And yet, at the same time, <laughs> some of those boats that go out to port and to port in that area. Well, obviously, I'm going to guesstimate there's probably more than the little pontoon boats. And if there's more than the pontoon boats that go out from that particular port or to that particular area, well, all they have to do is look at the draught power as far as that's concerned, because obviously <laughs> anybody who has intelligence would know or common sense would know that the boat would have to stay, you know, in, in its spot in comparison to flipping. Duh. And so I made the attempts because, you know, I could only explain so much the time. And so while they tried to tell me that they knew what they knew because they read something, again, I'm sure, especially certain types of military guys. <laughs> Certain types of military guys, probably a few dot 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 types, um, that could be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I know on YouTube, there's a lot of military guys who've been um, dissecting movies and going through that. As far as comparatively, that's probably an example where some guys, like, so they could probably read information about boats. <laughs> And then read, you know, the description of the Vandenberg or the Oriskany and maybe somebody who's flown an airplane because the Oriskany was a World War II aircraft carrier. And so whatever the World War II aircraft carrier type of airplane that it would take to take off for the, for the flight and then landing, though it would need to be a little bit longer of a runway, of course, because of the size, people, so on and so forth than on land. And taking in consideration of the, you know, <laughs> oceanic water sea spray and the currents and how that can impact, pun intended, landing an airplane. <laughs> Well, the Oriskany, I don't know what the numbers are. However, if the Oriskany has the length of an airplane runway, <laughs> well, it's probably a little bigger by a lot. And so, you know, <laughs> I know it's from World War II, though, you know, Maybe there's somebody who's met somebody who was around during World War II that is, is a smidgen stubborn a little bit. <laughs> well, just think of how big, you know, I mean, for females to understand, you know how certain males are about their, what makes them a male. Okay. <laughs> Whether or not it's accurate to size, okay. So, in comparison, think in the reverse capacity as to, you know, I'm not so totally, you know, because anybody who's gone dating someone could go into that capacity and be like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. so in that reference as to the boat size, as far as you males biologically, well, you know what you said about your, what makes you a male, as far as that biologically being born with. And so, you know, in, in that reverse way, of course, although I suppose, depending on what you were born with, sometimes I don't know how those situations go. However, you had that idea with that understanding. <laughs> and so, you know, um, anybody who's met a military guy who could say, you know, oh yeah, you know, for an example, Here's an example. Um, 
Yeah, well, I, I didn't graduate basic training, though I um, had a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. Well, you don't know what I did in basic training, okay? But you know I was in the army. That's what you got for a reference for the rest cutting. <laughs> and the phantom bike. So there's that, you know? And so in reference to, well, you know, how are you going to measure the boat? Well, you know, well, um, I was in basic for like nine days or something. <laughs> Whatever, you know? <laughs> If I actually have to go measure it, whatever, it is, whatever. <laughs> oh, I have to get a calendar and look at the calendar, okay. Well, it's more than nine days. It, you know, the, the I went to basic training in March of 2000 and the 16th of April in 2000 is when my head injury was. So just in that reference, it's more than 16 days that I had been in basic training. So in that reference, well, you know, so there's the we're risking in Vandenberg. Okay, you know. <laughs> Obviously. So, you know, it's, it's a few feet tall. Now think, in reference to the Arizona regarding Hawaii, well, that's an island. Okay. It's out in the middle of somewhere in the Pacific area of the oceanic waters. And it had to have part of it got a, an equivalent of a haircut. Out for it to not stick out. <laughs> so then there's the Ariscany. Okay, no, you can take the reference to the Arizona. And so. <laughs> Um, that's probably not directly off of the what would be considered the continental shelf for that area, though you have a reference that the continental shelf will be deeper. <laughs> <laughs> and depending on what type of boat, the Arizona in comparison to the Ariscany as to an uh, aircraft carrier. And then in comparison to the Vandenberg, where it just had a bunch of satellite communication. So anybody who's seen satellite dishes on land, well, they'd have to be bigger for the ocean, okay? Because of cell phone towers not being in the ocean. Because that communication satellite would be the equivalent of so, you know, anybody who's ever seen those satellite dishes on land, well, just think of how big the boat would have to be to have those satellite dishes on the boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they wouldn't be small because they'd have to be bigger mm -hmm. because of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> so there's news channels. They might have a satellite dish somewhere that, you know, probably if they have like a field of them, if they have a field of satellite dishes, because I've seen some in a few locations where they have a few, that's probably like one, you know, <laughs> on the Vandenberg, just one, you know, maybe, although depending on the size of the field, it could be, so I saw this area in the day of Texas that's off of I-35 when you're driving between San Antonio and Austin. And so they have satellite dishes. And so that area with satellite dishes looks like it's the center portion of the satellite dish. One of the smaller ones as to the Vandenberg. So those who don't know in the, in, the, in, the, in the satellite dish, you have the little center circle and then you have the dish that's bigger than the little circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have that for a reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've known this for a while. Now, if you don't have satellite dish fields in the area, those people who have seen a baby bottle, okay? So you can take a look at where the nipple is for the baby bottle, okay? And then the little area on the outside. And that's a teeny, itsy, bitty, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> version of a satellite dish, obviously, in comparison. 
And so, you know, just expand that to the size of the satellite dish. <laughs> and remember, since the Vandenberg was utilized in the 1960s, well, they'd be much, 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 so much bigger than those fields for the satellite dishes. Yeah. See, I knew this back in 2009. And so, you know, these civilian recreational scuba divers, you know, they tried to explain to me, you know, what they read. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I think one of the things I read was something like 500 something feet. Yeah, that's probably the center of the circle for one of the satellite dishes. The center part, not the dish part, the center part. Yeah, the dish part, yeah. <laughs> I knew that. I didn't need to. It for, so, you know, in regards of my three volume book series, I didn't put that together for me to know. I knew that. <laughs> I've known this this whole time. It's just that no one has actually asked me. Since 2009, I could have gone over these details back in 2009. However, you know, people chose the way they chose, so I had to take care of certain things myself. And so, you know, <laughs> I've known this. And so any of those individuals are regarding the civilian recreational lazy scuba diver sector that may have hypothetically what have you as far as their personal opinion regarding their personal opinion, well, that's their personal opinion in comparison to facts. And so, you know, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten this tattoo without a reason. You know, <laughs> common sense. And so while some people may have their opinions, again, lends their opinions, I have the experience. It's, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So while some people might have whatever their opinions have been in regards of where I had earned my 26 scuba diving certifications through booking, although technically 25 out of 26 by that technicalities, regards of, Nonetheless, <laughs> the booking of my 26 scuba diving certifications that I earned, I suppose I can make a joke in regards of this particular tattoo, you know, before I went scuba diving. Mm-hmm, that's before. Yeah, 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 the original is from 2006, so I already knew a few things. <laughs> I have taken care of a few situations before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, as well as before scuba diving in the year 2009. So while some people may have asked the absolute incorrect people to ask, which most likely that's what occurred. <laughs> Hypothetically, if, for example, if asking people before my head injury, if they did not ask my babysitter, Sunny Sonia, well, you probably didn't get any answer. Same thing with her husband, Joe Jose. You didn't ask. You probably didn't have that knowledge. Uh, maybe Nora, I don't remember her last name. Um, and you could, if you, you know, as far as her sons, I think there were, they were twins and then she had an older son um, to the twins. I know one was named Alejandro, don't remember the other one. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> then um, you could ask Timmy, who lived across the street. He, as well as Alejandro and his brother, and my, well, you couldn't ask my big blood brother, but made a whirlpool in the above ground pool in the backyard at babysitter's house. Though Timmy wouldn't be capable to tell you about the oceanic water area other than what he would know he wouldn't know about my work, except he could tell you about how I made a whirlpool <laughs> and then continue to make a whirlpool stronger and then swim through, walk through, do my thing, as far as I was concerned. Um, so if you didn't ask them, well, you didn't have those answers. 
you show, if you asked people such as Asher Holmes Elementary School, well, they wouldn't have before then to ask in that detail. And even if they went to Marlboro Recreational Camp, only if they were in the same group as me would they have any knowledge. If they weren't in the same group as me because of how they were broken down, well, then they probably wouldn't know because you'd have to have which camp counselor I had. And so there's that um, for all of that. And so then uh, if you asked Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, they couldn't give you any information on that whatsoever. Um, if you asked my great aunt Helen and or my aunt Linda, they probably could tell you that I always had an affinity for the oceanic water and they could probably tell you about some situations if my buck poo discussed it, but you'd have to speak with my great aunt Helen in comparison to my aunt Linda. So my great aunt Helen, which is my buckgum sister, which is my cousin Jade's biological mom and her biological father, I don't remember his name, I just know that they lived in Harlem where my grandma, mom, and grandpapa, that's if my great aunt Helen had discussed that at all, which she would only be capable to discuss my buckgum more so than my buck poo, which the only thing she probably really know about my buck poo is because of my buck poo, she was capable to come to the United States of America because of my buck poo knowing my grandpa Gavit. And so my grandpa Gavit and my buck poo and my buck gong, um, they knew one another and that's how they had escaped Mao Zedong and those references and because of my buck poo working with my grandpa Gavit, along with my buck gong. That was how my great aunt Helen, which is my buck gong sister, was capable to escape Mao Zedong as well. And so there's that. Um, and a lot of individuals who were capable to escape Mao Zedong were capable to do so because of my buck gong, but especially my buck poo. So there's that. Then you have, um, but the oceanic water portion, well, my great aunt Helen might be capable to discuss the legends she had heard, which would be in reference to my book Pooh, as to her work in China, as to the oceanic areas, as well as on land, because she had been in monasteries. And monasteries, over in China are not where you do meditate, uh, but that's not the main goal. <laughs> do a lot of work. And so there's that. Um, you, so you'd have those individuals that you'd be kind of capable to ask? Ish. Now, in reference to my Aunt Helen, which is my biological father's sister, that would only be if my buck poo discussed anything because my buck poo really didn't um, go into certain details as far as certain things were concerned. My buck gung did to a degree with my Aunt Linda in comparison. So my cousin Catherine, which would be my Aunt Linda and her husband Phil, their daughter, I don't know, I doubt that she was taught much because she was younger than my biological little sister, I think by about six years, maybe seven years. And so there's that. So those individuals that you could ask would be very limited and only if you did so before a certain time. So my buck gum, well, he passed away in the 1990s. Uh, my buck Pooh, from what I know, she passed away in the early 2000s, such as 2001. Um, <clears throat> and then um, in reference to my great aunt Helen, I'm uncertain in that reference. So regarding 
those situations as to who you could ask as to the time frame regarding the Atlantic area of the oceanic waters uh, would be a small amount of people though you would be capable to find some paperwork to read and so those references uh, you do have in regards of the map station in Illinois as to how I had informed the army area that I had thought it would be important to go over to China because of a few reasons and thought that that would be good and even in scuba diving um, I had discussed wanting to go over to China because I knew of certain species of fish that uh, I guess they'd be called fish and those references that um, I suppose in some ways um, a different type of family tradition <laughs> obviously um, as far as regarding what my buck poo had uh, informed me about regarding uh, certain situations and so but that's that's it's long ago and so um, in those references though as to the differences of the Oriskany and the Vandenberg so there's there's that and so people in Illinois would have absolutely no idea whatsoever, except for at the MEP station and, um, and the recruiter that I originally spoke with. And then possibly maybe one or two people that I had discussed some factors as to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. So they'd have that um, knowledge and then anybody who's seen a, a boat, <laughs> specifically a Navy boat um, and, and a Coast Guard boat, you know, well, the larger ones. And so if they've ever seen a communication Navy boat that was produced after the 1990s, well, it's smaller <laughs> compared to the Vandenberg. If that makes anybody feel better, I don't know. <laughs> it might, I don't know. Um, because it, it should, because look at how far technology has progressed. So there's that. That translates to how much human beings have progressed because they've been capable to make that smaller. Compared to the Vandenberg. See? <laughs> they might have a different viewpoint regarding how much bigger the bow would be in reference to the Vandenberg. <laughs> However, you could see progress as far as that goes, right? So, you know, there's that. <laughs> so, you know, silver lining, definitely, technically, because of communication lines. There's some silver there. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> ta -da. And so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> I mean, yes, there's that too, that too, though. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in regards of the civilian recreational scuba divers, you know, I mean, they'd, they'd be willing to, you know, whatever in that capacity, but yet again, you know, um, <laughs> 2012 compared to 2020, that arithmetic, so there's that. <laughs> there's also, you know, that tattoo and the line as far as what I had to pull out of my leg. 
that did not tickle <laughs> at all. <laughs> and then there was a, can't remember where it was, not, so I had a picture taken and when I had seen the picture as the, to the bruise from my in, my, in my, in my ankle area of my legs, well, for anybody who knew me during that time, all of a sudden I started wearing boots because it was one of theirs, you know, <laughs> for my outfits because that was important, yeah. So I took the precautions, you know, or I had bigger, you know, heels in comparison so that way, you know, <laughs> because... That's why. So, <laughs> so you know, um, and I think that was in 2000, towards the end of 2010, maybe. So, you know, just a residual bruising, I suppose. And it's, it's uh, I suppose it'd be like the equivalent of a deep bruise before it actually surfaced. So, it's a little, it's a, it's a little you know, I mean, I could walk, you know. <laughs> it's like a 50 cent or 50 cent song you know been hit with a few shells but still walk with a limp <laughs> but you know a little different capacity obviously so you know although since navy boat they kind of and there are seashells so you know i've i've talked about that in my official YouTube video before. Not this particular official YouTube video, though other official YouTube videos of mine for a reason. <laughs> and so, <laughs> they're not playing catch. So as far as, some, well, sometimes, sometimes. It depends on which seashells by the seashore. <laughs> So in that capacity, I figured I, you know, do that, you know, show that. I, I have had official YouTube videos of mine where that's been capable to be seen. And so I kind of figured, same thing with my modeling images. The first picture, which is an irony, the first modeling images I were in the Austin area, I run both times if I remember, regarding this particular <laughs> tattoo being completed. And so there was, you know, pun intended, I was made <laughs> um, in that reference to, I, I literally made it, however. <laughs> literally like not hidden at all and then then there's the irony of the olympus photo shoot <laughs> and you know <clears throat> uh, aphrodite <laughs> regarding the ocean and so there's a little bit known about that ish regarding aphrodite came from the ocean and so you know um you know Sure, sure, it's pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> sure, yeah, so, <clears throat> so pretty, you know. <laughs> yep, so pretty, so pretty, pretty. <laughs> or <laughs> the reality. And so, in those references, thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel, like my official YouTube videos. If you're gonna leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. Go to my website, www.susanbeleg.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. Possibly, hypothetically, there could be some people who have had some military experience where they went scuba diving and saw some little whatevers <laughs> scooting across the bottom of the 
depending on where they were, were part of oceanic types of waters. And so, you know, it might be googly eyes, depending on. <laughs> He's just a little baby. <laughs> Back in 2009. And so, you know, in reference to the Vandenberg, then there's Bobo. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, <laughs> and my childhood and my teenage years. <clears throat> reference to the oceanic waters. So, you know, <laughs> just is as it is, you know, just, you know, different meanings as far as that's concerned, each one, <laughs> literally. And so you guys have a great day. Today is the 10th of June. 2022 so you know it doesn't matter who is in elected office you know when stuff needs to be handled that took care of it it is what it is i personally didn't need that for myself regarding going over the details common sense would dictate if that was actually important people would just ask in comparison you know, there's only one person to ask and you'd have that in person, face to face in person. With that common sense in comparison to asking my son or my daughter or my ex-in-laws or any of that because those people as far as my ex-in-laws and or my biological mother and or my biological father and or my biological little sister cannot ever claim that they actually did anything in that capacity out of genuine care and or concern for my son and or my daughter and or I ever. Because they literally had one person to ask and that one person was me. So all of those needless problems regarding those hypotheticals in reference to that all could have been avoided if there was actual common sense. Same thing in reference to those civilian recreational scuba diver types that obviously proved being far too lazy, in my opinion, to take their big, I, I apologize, the, the regulator out of their mouths, to actually formulate words in an audible discussion because a discussion goes back and forth. So in reference to those two males who had put the uh, Hawaiian shirts on with those khaki pants and everything. And I'm not talking in reference to one of my civilian recreational scuba diving certification area working aspects because, you know, clear springs compared to the ocean. Um, in that reference, yes, I know there was one individual who had every now and then worn Hawaiian shirts, though I'm not talking about him. So that is as it is. And if I remember correctly, he already had been to, he had already taken off to go to the Galapagos Islands by that point in time, possibly. So then there's that. And then in the reference to those two males, that if anybody remembers that back in the time frame of around the second weekend of September in the year of 2009 been discussing with me so they were they were kind mm -hmm. and again three weeks after that and so that you know 2012 so you guys have a good day so yeah all those questions that could have been asked if it was important because if it was important then there's the facts that could have just asked instead my son and my daughter didn't need to suffer my family didn't need to suffer you know if there was that care if there was that concern for the actual best interests in comparison Thanks for tuning in. Today is the 10th of June, 2022. What is a family? Truth, that's so important. 
make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. Today is the 10th of June, 2022.